Um, guys, you already know that we are in the search for a little piece of property for Tex that he can have the kind of life that Moses and Billy have because that is a bull's best life. If we really want to be honest and say we want to give Tex his best life, he's not living it here in this little one-acre pasture. He's not. Okay, so he's staying plenty fed. He gets fed grains twice a day. He has green grass and hay. He gets everything a bull needs except Auga! Can I just leave it at that? Okay, well, we can say, okay. Nate says, thinks he can say it better. There's only one thing Texas not getting enough of in this, one, <laughs> this little pasture here. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Nate. I think we get the picture. Look what he's done. Look what he's done, y'all. See my fence is leaning? He has been running my fence line here with the, and putting enough force to where the whole fence is leaning over now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Buddy, I'm gonna let Santana, okay. I'm about to let Santana up front. I'm about to let Santana up front and so she'll help calm him down a little bit. Hopefully Gracie and Pearl will remind him. Oh my goodness. They're gonna remind him that he's a family man. Okay. You're a family man. You're a family man. Yes, you are a family man. Tex is very upset. And with good reason. He has reason to be upset right now, folks. I'm going to show you that reason here. I'm going to walk over. But you can see where he's at. He's come to the corner of the fence to scream and holler. Oh, Tex. So this here is Tex in his little pasture. His little one acre pasture. And you see where he's looking at, right? You see where he's looking? Right over here. Let me show y'all what's going on. So today, Paw Paw has made the transition He's begun the transition, if you will, of all of these young heifers who were born, who were sired by Billy. So you all know Billy is Paw Paw's breed bull. But Billy's time is limited here, guys. And here's why. Because all of these are Billy's offspring. All of his female offspring there's Miracle. You all know Miracle from watching my dad's videos. And so, my dad, these little heifers are what they call yearlings. They're coming of age, if you will. Oh, Tex! So, over in the distance, you see Moses. Moses is getting a chance to become acquainted with all of these little females. Looks like Paw Paw's put one, two, three, I count four for sure. Four little heifers over here so far. And now, Tex just cannot stand it. Tex just cannot stand it. He doesn't understand why he can't hang out with Moses and his females. I am, obviously I'm talking, I'm putting things into human terms terms that even folks that don't come from a farming background oh goodness well look there's another heifer way way over there another little yearling so there's several up here and uh, now miracle she's just enjoying the new grass this is new pastures for her she's has been on this pasture so she could care less about moses or tex and moses now what he's doing is taking his sweet time getting to know every one of them and that's important, guys, because that's important because these will become his herd at some point. So there's a lot of questions you're gonna have, a lot of questions. If you're still watching this far into the video, I'll begin to answer some of your questions. So you're gonna say, what's gonna happen to Billy? Oh my God, what's gonna happen to Billy? We love him. Guys, we all love Billy. And so don't worry, Billy will not 
Billy's a, 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 a big bull. Billy would never be processed, okay? People don't buy big bulls to process. But what will happen to Billy is he'll be co-opt off to a local, I don't want to say farmer, but a local cattle farmer, if you will, or rancher. And so that's what these guys around here do. It's, it's kind of like how you have a network of friends on Facebook. So there's also a network of cattle people here in this county. And so my dad has, over the years, has become acquainted with a lot of fellow cattle people. And what they do is they swap off, they swap off bulls. So my dad will send Billy off for a while. And as you know, uh, Moses was brought in from a fellow farming cattle person. I'll just say a cattle person. You don't say cattle man anymore because it ain't always men. But Billy, uh, Moses was brought in to become our new breed bull. Well, not ours, for my dad. You all know that I want to keep my herd pure, all Longhorn. And Santana and Tex are both registered Longhorns, very pure bloodline. And we're going to continue that. And so, uh, anyway, that's what's going on over here. Enough about Moses and these pretty little females he's getting acquainted with today. Let's talk about this guy over here. Oh, Lester, Lester, Lester. I'm coming, Tex. You deserve your, you deserve your time, and you're going to get it. Y'all have to excuse the sun. We're at a really, really bad angle right now. Sun's about to start its descent. And uh, we're standing on the wrong side of it. I'm going to walk around, though. And you're, and you're going to learn to love it. You're a family man, Tex. You have a beautiful, beautiful wife. Beautiful daughters. You're a family man. It's time you've... Okay, well, there ain't no talking to him. There's no talking to him. So now I want to talk to y'all about the last question you're going to have. Well, this won't be the last question. If I know the internet, you're going to have a lot of questions. But what I'm going to talk to y'all is about the another question that you've brought up so many times. Okay, you're going to say, Lester, 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 Lester. With all that morrow land, how come y'all can't find a decent sized pasture for Tex? Well, that's pretty simple. So yes, it is morrow land and we're very, very blessed to live here. But I've already explained that this pasture behind my fence, this is my fence right here. And guys, from this fence forward is the only property that Lester actually owns. This is the only property that Lester actually owns. Uh, everything behind this fence and all the way back, back down to the river is owned by my Uncle Raleigh. So that's one reason why I can't let Tex out back. And if you say, well, Lester, if he allows you to run your other cows and horses and donkeys on his property, why don't you just fix the fences and let Tex run back over here? Well, that's not easy either. So... What you're looking at back here is about 50 acres of fences that would have to be fixed. And guys, it would be foolish for me to try to invest the money to fix 50 acres of fencing for property that I do not own. I mean, I'm sorry, but that would be foolish. Let me let them guys up. They're really getting yancy. Give me one second. You all know that I have a gate here that requires two hands or does it? Look at this. Look at this. I learned this from the internet. Look at here. <laughs> I learned that from the internet. See, you guys, I give you a hard time. I give you a hard time, but y'all have helped me quite a bit with different things here and there. We're gonna continue this discussion in just a second. Let me let everyone come by. Whoa. Hey. Santana, go up there and console your man, please. Console your man. Help out, Gracie. Hi, Pearl. That's my Pearl friend right there. Okay. So, one thing we talked about is this land right here does not belong to me. 
So it would be foolish, guys, to invest as much money as it would take to come by and put a fence along through here because number one, it's not my property, but number two, it would actually require two fences. You see, where bulls interact, as of right now, it would, it would be Billy and Tex. When two bulls begin to interact, they will actually fight through a fence. So if you only had one single fence here, they would fight through it. So what you have to do is actually build two fences with a bit of a buffer zone between you. So I want you to notice over here, we have my fence on this side. We have my dad's fence over on that side with about a 10 foot buffer zone here in the middle. And that goes all the way back to the river. So I did build this, it's temporary, it's nothing fancy. And if a bull wanted to get through this, he could. So to build a really good bull proof fencing, you would have to require a quite a bit better than what I've done over here which would mean quite a bit of money. And so, so that's one reason why I can't just fence this off and, and let Tex run free back here with his own herd of longhorns. And then someone else says, well, Lester, how come your dad don't give you a piece of that land? Guys, my dad is not ready to deed off land yet. My dad is still very active. Uh, I'll say young and active. My dad is still young and active and my dad has not begun to downsize yet. My dad, as a matter of fact, is still continuing to grow. He's still growing his cattle. He's still growing and raising his goats. He's still building his herd up to the size that my dad wants to have to help maintain his pastures. And so you don't tell a man at some point it's time to downsize. That has to happen inside of the man. So when my dad's ready to start doing that, at that point we'll have to or my dad will have to decide how many cows he's going to actually leave and, uh, and whatnot. But there's no way that a son should go to his father and say, hey, I want, it's time for, you know, any of that kind of stuff. That has to be up to the father. And uh, it's different fathers in this Morrow family have done it different ways. Some have deeded land off to their kids fairly early in life. And some have waited till the very end of days. And my dad is going to be one who will wait to the very end of days. And in the meantime, I'm, it's unfair to have Tex waiting. It is. It's unfair to have Tex waiting until the day that my dad's ready. So uh, we also have a little flooding issue back here. So whatever kind of fence you build has to be sturdy and strong enough to not only sustain itself through two bulls fighting and pushing around it, but also... It has to be able to sustain whenever the floodwaters come across here. So we do have some, some issues. So I hope that that sort of answered most of your questions. I'm sure you guys will still come up with some, some other things. But um, I have been looking for, I would say about 10 acres. You know, the general rule of thumb is an acre per cow. And I would like to have a herd of about 10. I would like to have a herd of about 10. Tex. And, you know, his own little family. Oh, I'll answer one other question while I'm here. A lot of people say, well, Lester, what about whenever Santana and Gracie and other females become of age? Well, guys, that's easy. You can always tell when a cow or any animal is coming in heat. It's always easy to tell when an animal is coming in heat. They always wear matching underwear and they shave their legs. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just messing with you ladies. Um, yeah, they don't wear matching bra and panties and shave their legs. What they do, though, is they give you other signs. And it's, you don't have to go into detail on that. Just let me tell you that as a person who's been around animals, it's uh, easy to see when they're coming in heat. So what you would do as the responsible uh, breeder is you would take those animals, those females, and put them in a different pasture. Or, like we've done with Pearl this past year, send her off to a week at band camp. Band camp is a metaphor, obviously. Oh, buddy. It is the saddest thing to be a bull. You need about... Oh, I know. You want a few more ladies to hang out with. Oh, I get it. I do get it, y'all. We, we get it, y'all. Poor buddy. 
So I hope that that kind of answered some of your questions. Um, we have looked at some different properties, but guys, we have a very strict criteria before I would buy anything. Uh, number one, I have made this promise. I will not use I'm a survivor nonprofit money to buy property. I will not do it. I give you my word on that. I'm going to say that again. I'm a survivor. Part of us is a nonprofit. The donations that we receive, the supporters on Facebook, I will never, I would not use a penny of that money ever to buy property. Uh, because the property that I would be buying would not, would not be for rescues. It would not be for the animals that we've rescued. It'd be for the animals that I, that I actually bought and paid for, which would be part of my hobby farming. I know that the folks who donate to the page and those that support the page financially, uh, they do that to support the babies who've been rescued. They don't do that so Lester can grow his longhorn herd. So that should squash all of those questions. And hey, by the way, you do know that as a nonprofit, all of our financial records are public, right? You cannot hide financial records on a nonprofit. We are very, very careful because I do not want to ever risk losing the supporters uh, and our nonprofit status. What else do I want to talk to y'all about? I know you're all hungry. I'm going to feed you right now. This has been a really long video, but I think it needed to be said. There's a lot of things going on right now. A lot of questions that you've had from different videos that I've made. And so I hope that this answered a few of them. But uh, hey, as you continue to comment, I continue to read comments and I will continue to make little videos and trying to answer as much as I can. All right, folks, let's go ahead and end this where we started it with the sad bellows of text. I know. If you feel sorry for text, raise your hand. Oh, I want to hear. I want to see all the hands raised. I want to in the comments, y'all. Don't say a whole bunch. Just raise your hands. I want to see the little emojis with your hands raised. That would be cute. And that just means we feel sorry for Tex and we encourage and support the decision to find him his very own piece of property where he can live a happy bull type life. And over time, I will begin to look around for a couple more females. And at some point he'll have his own little, his own herd. But that will be fun for y'all to watch. That will be fun for y'all to see that transition. Because right now, this is just sad. This is just sad. All right, folks. Thank y'all for watching. And sorry the video took a while, but it's a lot to talk about. Pablo. I don't know. Are you hungry? He's like, Daddy, I need worms right now.